welcome back to this part 12 now of the the chieftain from Meng and uh, as you know in part 11 we did at the beginning of the month and now it's nearly the end of the month November 2023 and if you remember we did the wheels and the tracks and everything and now that's all dry so you can see we've got some light deposits of dirt on there nothing too much over the top because these things were generally kept pretty clean so you can see we've just got light dirt deposits nothing much at all so um there we go so there's our wheels all done they'll go on randomly i will add a bit more dirt to them um, i will probably spray some buff on it as well some uh, xf66 i think it is um very very lightly we've got our tracks there we've got to clean the pads off to expose the rubber but uh they're all looking pretty good i think you'll agree I think they look quite nice um so they're all looking good wheels are all looking good so I'm certainly happy and I've got to be honest people that do YouTube videos especially if they're doing like tutorials type stuff they should really know what they're doing and most of the time I do but here I don't I haven't got a clue what I'm doing so I'm basically <laughs> um, sort of seeing what happens really now I want to add some mud and stuff to it. Now, when you look in these, when you look in this book and you see this one on the front of here, you can see it's on like a parade. So these are all on parade. They're all on the street. They've all been cleaned, possibly even repainted or whatever. You can see here's one that's in use and it's kind of dirty and dusty, not quite as bright as the uh, as the others. But when you actually look in this book and you can see here, we got some actually in use. You can see one here look and, and it's quite clear that the wheels are quite grubby and muddy um, you can see one here this is absolutely plastered in mud all over the sides and everything all at the back another one here so there's another one here that you can see that's all covered in mud um, so <laughs> making a video there's my mum texting it's absolutely incredible um, so there we go so you can see one there's absolutely filthy there's another one there that's filthy, another one here all spattered with mud. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna go like that. I'm not gonna go that muddy, but I'm gonna go a little bit dirtier than you can see one here with the side covers off. We can see we've got some mud in there and everything. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some dirt just to sort of make it you see this one here? That's all quite grubby as well. So um I'm gonna add some some dirt. Not I'm not gonna have it like a World War II beat up Sherman or something, but I am gonna add some dirt. So I was talking to Sully the other night in the live stream. If you haven't gone over to Sully's channel, Sully Scale Models, go and have a look. It's I'll put a link in the comments below. If I forget, please tell me. Um, not in the comments, in the description below the video. Um, he's just finished the Airfix 148 Sea King. And believe it or not, he's modelled it as a chicken shed. Yes, it's on a diorama. It's got lights in it. I didn't even notice the lights until Moss told me. Um, which shows how subtle they are. And yes, it's got chickens in it. It's a chicken shed. So go and have a look at that. It's absolutely brilliant. He's got a playlist for it and everything. So um, and he's just recently had a bit of a rough time. So he could do with a bit of help and support, you know, to um, to push him on through. By the way, I forgot to say this is part of the Black Rifle Model Works. This corner's coming up there. This is part of the Black Rifle Model Works um, group build, which is finishes end of December, which is I need to get my ass in gear. Uh, and this is part of the Black Rifle Model Works, and it's the Queen Elizabeth. So anything that was built, used, whatever, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. So that's 52 to 22, 1952 to 2022. So uh, so there we go. Um, so that's where you're going to see this one. I am determined to finish this, to get it over the line. I mean, once the underside is done and the wheels are on and everything, I think the rest of it is going to be plain sailing. Because as you may know, we've got all this here all ready to go. So um, I'm just going to get that text because my mum isn't very well at the moment. Neither am I. I've got a bloody cold, but it is, does seem to be going. So I'm going to get that text and then I'll come back. So anyway, as I was saying, I was chatting to Sully over on um, Sully Scale Models. And apparently this stuff is really good. So I've got this off Amazon. And uh, it's about £12, I think. And it's basically a sort of tub of mud. And I've done a, little, a tiny little experiment on the side of a little pot here. And you can see how it dries. It dries very, very hard and it does actually look like mud. So what we're going to do is use that. And what you can do, I've, I've been practicing with it with just scraps. What you can do is put it down. Let's take this turret off. 
what you can do is put it down and then you can use water to manipulate it. So obviously all this in here is way too clean and we need some mud and that and dirt splashed around. Uh, so basically we'll have some mud, mud built up on any horizontal surfaces and then we'll have it sort of splashed around everywhere else. So um, I'm going to concentrate today on these areas in here. Now I'm kind of conscious of what they probably did when they pressure washed, they probably left the sides on and pressure washed the mud out of the main wheels but these probably left, were left quite dirty. And I also noticed in one of those pictures on there, it looked like the the um, track rollers were actually uh, were actually grey. So I'm one of the, they say they're all the same. I'm telling you they're not. So what I've got here is a, an old brush. I've made sure there's no thinners or anything in it. So I'm just going to take some of this out of here. I'm going to see how this goes. Now this is the first time I've ever done this on an actual model. So I'm just going to put some on here. If you go and look at Sully's, he's, he's done um, a beautiful D9 uh, dozer. It's really, really nice. Um, and he's done this all over that with, with a different... AK do a whole range of different muds. So I just had a look on Amazon and got the cheap one. So we're just going to let that build up on there. You can see that mud is in there. So we'll see how it goes. Um, let's get my light a bit better, don't I? You can see that mud is in there, and then what we can do, get that up on here. Of course, this has got working suspension, so we've got to be careful we don't go jamming the suspension up. I'm hitting that my head on that light now. So um, I've got to have this horrible cutting mat down, which I know is all shiny and everything. It's bloody horrible. That's why I've gone to this light green paper, which I much prefer, but I don't want to mess that up with this stuff. Plus I wanted to get the Brat Rifle Model Works badge in the shop because it is their group build after all. If you go and look at Brat Rifle Model Works on um, YouTube and Facebook, fantastic site. Got Luke on there, he's basically the main man. Um, and his, I mean he'll be laughing at me now doing this. He'll be saying, mate you're doing it all wrong like you know because it's bloody rubbish what you're doing here. It's bloody crap isn't it? he comes from Scotland as you can tell by my accent um we'll get some on there as well I think get some on top of there and then I think we'll just brush some on here randomly get some in there as well There's, there would be a proper build up of mud in there wouldn't there but as I said I've never done anything like this before ever so I'm I think I'm going to enjoy this to be honest I carry on like that and I'm going to turn the camera off and then I'll come back when I start doing some water because this must be like watching paint dry or grass grow. See you in a minute. And we're back two weeks later <laughs> uh, and as you can see we've got the mud under there. I have basically just put the mud in and then gone in with some of my Brown Modeler's World oil washes just to give some variation in tone. So as you can see we've got a sort of area of mud. Um, we've got some staining on the front. Obviously I'm going to do all this when I do the outside of the tank. And I've gone around the backs there. I'm thinking the mud gets splashed up um, and catches on the top of these, these gearbox parts here. And then the, the mud will splash down the front of the tracks. And it almost makes splashes as it's going through any muddy puddles. And that will get splashed onto the front as well. So we'll deal with that. But what I want to do at the moment is just get this area in here done so we can get the wheels and the tracks on and then we can start getting the rest of the tank built up. As for the wheels, um, when you last saw these, they had some pigments in them. Um, I've now gone around some of that uh, AK mud and I've put them, some of that in there. And then again, I've given them a good soak with some washes. Um, I may see if I can get some grease spots or something going on. They're nearly dry now, but you can see we've got the, uh, the idlers there. Uh, it's looking all right. I mean, I've basically realised that I am rubbish at weathering. I'm awful at it and I can't do it. So, and I don't, I'm not particularly enjoy, enjoying it, I must be honest. I'd much rather do the, you know, I've loved doing all the building of this beautiful, beautiful model and all this painting and masking and that. It's been really enjoyable, but this is just, yeah. But I've got to get it finished before the end of the year. Today is the 11th of December. So, these beautiful quick tracks um, are all weathered and everything, as you can see. 
And one of the things we have to do is, you can see on this one, you've got the pads, which are obviously going to stay clean. If it's going on any concrete or tarmac or anything, it won't be, they won't be muddy. So how are we going to deal with that? Well, you can see this one's done. So you can see that one's all done with the, with the pads and everything. So when we put that on a sprocket, we can see how it's going to look just like that. So you can see looking nice and authentic. Well, as authentic as I can get it anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'm afraid I think I should stick to my airplanes, shouldn't I? So, um, basically I've got some IPA here, isopropyl alcohol in a bottle. I've got a nice hard cotton bud. Okay, so we just get some IPA on there and then literally come along and just wipe over the pad. It's, it's a fairly sort of, it doesn't take that long, but it's, uh, you know, it's the sort of thing you need some decent music on or a documentary to listen to or something in the background and just basically wipe, wipe the pad clean. And just remove all the weathering stuff. So you can see there we get this you get this clean rubber pad as opposed to all the weathering on it. So um, that's why they're made in that rubber black colour, that sort of very dark grey, which I think was very, very thoughtful. So uh, good job, guys. So I'll get the rest of this done, let this dry, and then I think I might look at putting all this together um, and then maybe do a bit of weathering or something on top of it. I don't know. We shall see. But... Uh, I'll be back in a minute once these tracks are done. All right, so um, I put a little bit of black wash in a few places now as well, just to try and, I don't know, dirty it up a bit. Um, so there we go, right. So we can start to get these wheels fitted and then I think we can look at getting the tracks on. I was thinking about making the tracks up into a loop and then, um, go on. You do you want to, there we go. Yeah, what's the thing about making the tracks up into a loop and then feeding the wheels in afterwards, but I thought that might be a little bit difficult. So I thought, go this way and then we, uh, we'll be okay. So, um, fit these wheels. I'm gonna try and get them so they're not all, cause some have got a black wash on and some haven't. I'm gonna try and get them so they're sort of randomly on there. Just like so. Okay, make sure they're all fully home. See, that one's not. This is what I'm going to start breaking things, I think. Okay, so they're all on. A bit wobbly, but never mind. And then what we can do is come along with our track. Now I need to check which way around the tracks go. Hang on a second. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> um, these tracks are a very, very tight fit in here. So the mud and stuff that I put in there is kind of getting in the way. They do actually move, but I'll show you in a minute. So um, quick tracks, uh, just to show you this. I've seen the way in my, in my lovely book that Phil sent me. We can see which way the tracks go. So the, the sort of chevrons point down. So I've sort of done the same, got the chevrons pointing down. So there we go. Um, so that's gone on like that. And now what they give us, these tracks are quick tracks. They're made by a company called Quick Wheel and they're a Polish company and you can get them there. Model red at Mac.com. There you go. Model red at Mac.com because I, I, I keep getting asked I don't keep getting asked, I do get asked where they came from. So what I'm going to do here, just to straighten this rod out, I'm going to roll. Hang on, it's not, that's not the way you do it, is it? You do it under a flat sheet, that's right. You don't do it with a... So we get these two bits of wire here that all look all bent and everything, and just roll this over the top, and hey presto, it should... You go they come out lovely and straight then so that's how to straighten out your brass pins if oh right and then that is going to go through you've got these special links at the end of the tracks and that's going to go through there that's going to feed through the track link Just like so, 
and turn it over. Move the track around a bit. Get it so that it's in no man's land and then push that rod through. There we go, that's come right through now. So we can, what we can do now is put a blob of super glue on there and that will hold that in place. As you can see, our tracks are on. I've got a little bit of slack in them, which is how I wanted them because I've seen pictures of them with them hanging here, drooping down. So when it's sat on its wheels, it should droop down a bit. But overall, believe it or not, this is my first ever attempt at proper muddying up a tank. And overall, I'm really happy with that. Bearing in mind, I don't want it to be really muddy. I don't want it to be like a king tiger all caked in mud and everything. Um, I want it to be dirty, not like it's been on street parade, but I want it to be like it's been used and not been pressure washed yet. So uh, there we go. So um, I'm going to put a drop of super glue on there. I'll get the other side done and then I'll pop back and we'll see how it all looks. Eh? There we go. And uh, I must admit, I'm really happy with how that's come out. It's, uh, I think it looks great. Um, looks really, really good. I've got the sort of silver on there. I've got the little bit of rust and some mud and everything. Uh, one word of warning though, if you are building one of these, be careful with putting your mud in because there is literally no clearance, especially around the front end here. And the tracks, I'm sort of, I'm, so I can, they're workable tracks and I can roll it a little bit, but I don't want to do it too much because it's asking a lot for the track to sort of get past all that mud and everything that's in there. So um, I think it will be a non, I mean, you can still use the suspension and everything, but uh, and they, they are very, very nice, but um, yeah, and I've seen, I've, I've actually seen a picture of a Challenger uh, one, they, they've done the tracks for a Challenger one, and um, they, I've, they've seen a picture of that actually moving, so of course it's Tamiya as well, so it's a lot sort of, um, you know, a lot of the earlier Tamiya kits were designed to be motorised, weren't they, so they had all the clearances and everything in them, but uh, anyway, but I'm um, no, really happy with how that looks. So, as you can see, we've got all the spotlessly clean side skirts and everything. We'll have to do some lovely weather on them and get some dust on them. Because when you see them in the book here... Um, uh, you remember, 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 there's some here that are quite dirty. And they do look... I think I, this is the trouble with making videos over a period of weeks. You don't tend to... There we go. You can see there's, they're quite dirty. So, we'll go for that sort of look, I think. That's the kind of look I'm after. Um... You can see another one there, with all the dirt and everything on it. There's, there's a really dirty one there. So uh, that's the kind of look I'm going for. Anyway, what's going to be next? I think we're going to have to start looking at... I don't know why, but it seems to be... It needs some weight in it, doesn't it, to make it sit down better on that suspension. So there's something I suppose we could look at. You know, just a lump of lead or something in there. Um, it's sort of sitting all daintily up on its wheels because it's not very heavy. But uh, there we go. Right. I suppose we could always screw it to a base, couldn't we? We go in flying mode with the tracks in the air. Right. Let's have a look at what we're going to do next. And we're back. Okay. So I've got all the parts here ready to go on the hull. Um, I've had to unmask the headlamps. You can see the the, uh, the headlamps there. They're looking great. Uh, I had to un unmask them because one, I have to see which is the black lens because the black lens is going on the inside um, towards the inboard, if, if you like. And also, once the guards are on, it'd be very difficult to get the mask off. So I've unmasked those lights. So if I do do any flat coat, and I'm going to have to sort of basically just put a, a strip of paper in there or something just to stop them getting the matte varnish on because they do look quite nice and shiny and they'll be a quite, sort of, you know, a, a distinct difference from all the rest. So basically we've got all these bits and we've just got to glue them on. Now before I can do anything else, um, I've got to fit these fire extinguishers, which I've done off camera, painted them green, put the decals on them. So they're all looking good. And these go basically one on the inside of here and they have a big and a small hole. So you can, and a big and a small pin to make sure you get them the right way around. So that one's going to go in like that. So I'm literally going to hold that in position and I'm going to go over here, grab my extra thin and just put a couple of drops in behind like so. 
there we go so that's that glued in place so we'll just leave that there to dry for a minute it won't stand up maybe it'll stand up on that end yes it will and then this one here has the same here so we've got there I've done three of these and one is one is brown and the other two are white because this one goes onto the on a box on the turret so this one's going to go in with the small pin and the big pin and that's just going to go in there and then we'll have a drop of extra thin one two and that's right and that and that will hopefully the paint will be melted by the glue and it will all sort of look like one there we are so that's good that's that on there um, and then the third one is going to glue onto a box in fact we'll do that now so we don't forget it but the third one is going to glue onto a box on the turret which is here there it is I've got all my parts um, separate for the turret and the hull so we can do one at a time without getting the bits mixed up that's just going to push into there and that doesn't want to go for some reason okay I'm going to have to drill those, oh no it's gone now it's always as good as a dry fit so drop a glue in there, drop a glue in there, there we go and that will glue that in place so we can put our glue away right so that's that done we can just drop that in there and that can sit there ready for us to carry on okay so we've got to get all this on so I'm going to work through the manual so we're going back to step 11 and um, we've got to fit these headlamps and headlamp guards so let's get this turned round so the headlamps I'm just going to double check yes the black lenses go inwards so they are going to sit in there like so again they're a nice tight fit which is good so I'm going to do this off camera because I need to hold up and see what I'm doing and everything so I'm going to get these glued on off camera and then we'll come back and see how they look okay moving forward we've done the lights and the little front plate thing whatever that is I guess it's to stop mud and water going up over the driver um, if he's actually looking out of his hatch and we've got the guards on the headlights and everything so you can see it's all looking lovely and the paint matches all worked out well so that's all good uh, we've also got the hatch in and I've put the cover over that um, over that lookout there and then on the back end back way back in the instructions it was asking us to fit these little tiny supports in here this symbol here means same on the other side um, and we built up the toolboxes which would have protected them but I didn't have the toolboxes fitted obviously because I still don't have them fitted and um, and I've just fitted those bits now they're a very snug fit this is very wing nut wings like uh, the paint seems to interfere with the fit of the parts so um, bear that in mind when you build yours the paint needs to be scraped away from all the little mating areas so here this toolbox is basically going to go on there okay so what I'm going to do I'm tempted to fit them with a drop of super glue actually I think I'll use the um, flexi 5k CA from VMS this is the PE one it's a nice medium consistency super glue and it doesn't dry instantly so you get a little bit of time to play with it but it's extremely strong when it does dry and yes I know what I'm doing here is gluing paint to paint basically but what I have found is that this VMS super glue does actually dissolve the paint so this is one's going to go on this side so I'm going to put a drop on there as well drop on there and a drop on there there we go just like that and then we should be able to just plonk this in place and that should stay there yeah and I'm just going to make sure these little, little plates at the back all they are is little um, plates so that when they open the engine covers 
they just fall on them rather than falling on the toolbox. So whatever these boxes are, I call them toolboxes, but uh, I have already dry fitted these a number of times, so that's why I'm not worrying about dry fitting now. I'm just going to get some glue into those holes, just like so. This really is a lovely kit guys, I'd recommend this to anyone, it is amazing, it's a very lovely kit. I think I've said that a few times before. There we go, so now this one can go on here. Not going straight on this time, there we are, that's it, gone in. So those are both in now, we'll just straighten up those. Well, they don't need straightening, they're absolutely fine. So there we are, that's the that's the back end of our tank all together. So that's pretty cool. And then we've got these toolboxes on the sides here. Now I believe these fit really well. So that one's gonna go like that. doesn't need gluing. Okay, so once again, I am going to use a drop of super glue. I'm just going to put some glue on those little pins and those little holes. Because it, it's, it's not like a load bearing piece. It doesn't need, it doesn't need to be extremely well fitted. It just needs to be sort of held in place really. There we go, that's that in. And then the same on this side. I've already dry fitted these, so I know they fit. Go on into the hole, go on. Right. Same here. Into the hole, please. Thank you. And then this one is going to drop on. Like that. This this side is doesn't even need to be glued really. It fits very snug indeed. As you can see. And here. <laughs> there we go. So that's that in. That's good. So starting to take shape now and look a chief done. So that one's going to go into there, so that fits lovely. I hadn't actually previously dry fitted those, that's why you can see me dry fitting them now. So we'll put a drop of super glue in that hole there, and a drop in this hole here. Just wipe that away from there. that's that one on. I'll just test fit this one. Yep, that fits perfect. So again we'll get some super glue into that hole there. It's cool. And then some into that hole there. And then just drop this down in. Job done. I need to check my references because we've got some little sort of handle lever things here and check they're not painted red or something. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. But that is pretty much the hole done. Then all we've got to do again, I've test fitted this previously. I need some more glue. Just gonna put a little drop of glue down there. And we'll just put a drop into there. Keeping the glue on the inside and the upside of these so that we don't see any shiny bits of super glue sticking out. Just put a drop more in there. And then that is going to pop on like that. And literally, that doesn't need gluing either, really. 
and then we've got these toolboxes and we've got the one where are you the manual with all this do 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 here we go we've got the one with the first aid box is going on this side yes so that is basically got a square hole and a round hole so is that going to fit in there yep so we'll put some glue there we'll put a drop down there as well and then that can go in like that okay so there you've witnessed the sound of Jess, the sound that Jess makes when somebody rings the doorbell. So we're going to fit this one in this side now. Drop a glue in there. And a drop of glue in there. Just like so. And then we can drop that one into place as well. Like Lego this is, isn't it? There we are. So that's that. I've also got to add a couple of trap links, but I'm going to paint it and everything. I'm going to put the trap links on so they look kind of newish. Maybe a little bit of rust on them or something. Um, we've got the cable spot on here. I'm going to fit them after we've done the weathering and everything. I've got the cables in the box here, all cleaned up, and ready to go. They do fit beautifully. So, uh, so that's pretty good. Um, so where are we now? We are pretty much done with the hull and starting on the turret there so we've got to start adding a few bits to pieces to the turret okay so picking up on the turret here got all the parts got a super glue probably going to use tammy extra thin for a lot of this all the parts here that are not used so starting off here we're putting this um, little lookout here and then we've got this lookout here I've got mine open you have the option to have it open or closed so this little piece here is going to go on there like so as you can see that clips into place like a really good little dry fit so what I'm going to do here is just remove some paint from there remove some paint from there remove some from there and then make sure the bottoms of these are all clean and then I'm going to get some extra thin in fact, what I'll do is I'll put this on first, just like so. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. And then I can get some extra thin in there and in there. Just hold it down and we'll get some in there as well and a bit on the back. So that's that held in place. We've got the masking in there, which we've got to take off, I mustn't forget. And then we've got next to that, we've got this other lookout area here. So I'm just going to remove some paint here. So all you need is that tiny little bit of the, the glue will actually work through the paint. You don't actually have to remove the paint, but I like to, if I can, just remove some. You have to be careful the glue doesn't get underneath that masking tape. That's gone into there like that. We could have actually glued it from the back here. Look. So we'll do that as well. Okay, so that's that fitted. Now um, we have the flare thing. Is this the right one? No, nope, that's the wrong one. That's the right one there. And that is going to fit basically in these little locations here. So I think I will just scrape a bit there, scrape a bit there, scrape a bit there, scrape a bit there. There we go. And then we will. Scrape some paint off of there. 
and then hopefully we should be able to drop this in place and have it stay there. Clearly not. It doesn't look right, it just doesn't look right. But it is. Well, it's right according to the instructions. The tweezer's gone. That leg there looks to be a bit high. But it doesn't matter. It's a very, very vague location, guys. I guess to keep it scale, that's all they could do. They couldn't go putting great big pins on there and stuff because it would look horrible. You can see what I'm doing with the extra thin, just dab it on. As long as you don't hang around, it won't affect the paint. But it will weld through the paint. Okay, so I'm going to hold that there for a few minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, moving on. Uh, it's telling us to build up this um, searchlight here and then we're actually fitting the searchlight. So we've got the searchlight there made up. I chose to go with a closed cover because I didn't like the, the sort of lack of detail on the inside of the light. Um, so we're going to add that. We've got those two hatches to go on the back as well. So do, 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 do. what we're going to do, we're going to put this on. How is this fitting? Um, this fits with its legs around. Okay, so once again we have a very kind of weak looking fitment. So what I'll do is just scrape some paint from there. And I'll scrape some paint from there. And on the bottom it only sort of butts up to it, I think. I scrape some paint from there. And then we should be able to get this in position. Yeah, it has got quite a good location actually there. Onto the side of that block as well. So we'll remove paint from there. We'll take some off of there. That should do us. So hopefully that will go pedary all the way around in there. The same down here and the same up there. So that's in place and then these hatches I think these will just snap on. They they are a very, very positive fit. Hmm. Very positive fit indeed. So positive they don't fit. But I have actually had them on there before, so... Wow. I'll, tell, I'll get this done off camera. This one here is a very nice fit. As you can see, this goes on like that. And just That's in place. But this one here is a different story. I'll get this I've done and I'll be back. Okay, that was, uh, that was tough. <laughs> it's gone in um, and basically I'll come with a paintbrush then glue them from the inside with the extra thin so that's good uh, all this here is done I believe yes we've got the little block on there with the lookout there uh, that piece of ducting going across is there that's done and that there we haven't used part F43 I've used the resin, resin parts that uh, Phil sent me so thank you very much for that Phil um, and then We've done those hatches, we've got to fit the winch, whatever it's for, I don't know what it's for, but we have a winch here that's going to go on with that little bit facing forward. That's going to go on like that. 
So I think we'll get a drop of super glue into there. And then we can plonk that winch on. Just like so. I'm not sure if it's supposed to face forward or if it's supposed to be in line with the, the side. I'm not, supposed, I'm not sure if it's supposed to face directly forward. Oh, it's supposed to be. supposed to be kind of in line with the side it just feels like it hasn't got in far enough but it has that is as far as it goes so that's how it sits like that right in fact we'll get a bit of extra thin in there as well just as a bit of weld action there we go that's in that's done and now we've got on the other side here we have that other flare launcher going, which we'll do last. We've got this little box on the side here with the with the fire extinguisher on the bottom that we just did. So that's going to sit on there like so. You heard that snap into place. It's still not fully down. There you go. Wow, it's a good fit, isn't it? So we'll just get a drop of extra thin up under there and let it. Let it go on, and then uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, we've got the toolbox here going on the side, so that's just going to sit in there like that. So we're going to remove paint from here, okay, and then we'll remove paint from here, and then we can put a puddle of cement in there. which will really get things going. So I'm not flooding it, it's just the brush doesn't seem to pick anything up. There we go, that's gone on. Whoops. Maybe it's not such a positive fit. Not a very positive fit at all, actually. It really does not want to stay on there. I'll be back in a right. minute. So I've also fitted that little flare discharger there. We've got that box on. I ended up putting it on with super glue. Um, it just did not want to stay. So this little toolbox here is going to go on the inside of this basket, which was previously built and painted. These things are a real nice part of the kit. They are lovely. So just going to put that toolbox there and then I'm going to add a drop of extra thin very quickly into there and into there and hopefully that will disappear. There we go. As you can see the glue evaporates. Once you don't hang around the glue evaporates off the surface. It just disappears but it will have gone into the holes and hold, hold that box in place. So all we've got now are these these four or five pieces here. So we've got the Cupola going on the top, cupola, cupola, however you want to say it. No doubt somebody's going to tell me I've said it wrong, but who cares? <laughs> um, so that's going to go like that. We got a pin. Yeah, it's going to go like that. We've got a pin. The pins are offset, so it can only go on one way. That pin into that hole there at the front, yep, and then that back one should find its own place in life. There we go. And I'm going to turn the cupola around so it's facing forward because now what we want to do is put some cement into those holes to help lock this into place. In fact, I'm going to use a paintbrush. People often ask me how do I clean my paintbrush after I've used it in the glue. Well. I'm not sure if you're aware, but a lot of people are aware. The Tamiya Extra Thin is basically Tamiya Airbrush Cleaner. It's basically the same chemical. So 
there you are and we've got all the masks on there to get off as well after we've done any flat coating or anything we've got the masks on that spotlight there so that's going on there um oh my phone's ringing <laughs> listen to that anybody knows me they ring my mobile it's really important they only have a mobile number so that's going to be somebody trying to sell me something that i don't want don't need and have never wanted so this little doohickey is going to go on the side of the machine gun and that's going to be extremely flimsy and then the machine gun is going to sit on the cupola on those two little bits there and that is also going to be extremely flimsy so I'm going to leave that off for now the baskets is telling us to fit them now so we've got this one here is a very nice fit. I remember dry fitting this. Yeah, they've got some lovely positive locations. So we've got this area up here, that little land in there, and then we've got some little square bits there, and then we've got that bit there where the top's going to go. So I'm just going to put a drop of extra thin into each of those two. just to kind of tack it in place, as it were. And then that will clip into that hole. As you can see, it is a gorgeous fit. It's such a lovely model, guys. It really is. This has got to be one of Meng's best. It's just gorgeous. Okay, and then we'll put a drop of cement on that one. I've moved that around and made a mess. So I've got to get the grit in it. I've got to touch up around that one as well. So that's okay. We'll just mask that off and just blow it in with the airbrush rather than brush it on. Because this is Tamiya LP. I'll have to look back in the videos. I think I used LP13, didn't I? Or was it LP12 Cure? I've used one of the um, Japanese, Imperial Japanese Navy colours. I seem to remember. So then that can go into there. That can go into there. That one, in fact, is not in its place. What is going on here? I do believe that piece of PE is playing up that piece of PE is supposed to be on the outside of there that's it that's what's causing the problem there we go make sure that piece of PE goes on the outside not jammed up against the side because that's what's stopping it going in properly so it's all gone in now In fact, that needs touching in as well because I haven't sprayed it properly, have I? So there we are, that basket is fitted on there now, beautifully. You can see it's a proper look in it. I mean, this is out of the box, guys. It's, it's just incredible. Such a lovely model. And then this basket here, again, we have some lovely little location points for it. So we've got there, there and there and then there's a little tiny one there so what i'm going to do is see if i can fit this without glue and then put the glue in after and the answer to that is a positive yes and that top one there needs to come back and go in and there we are so extra thin in there extra thin in there and a drop in there and then a drop in there and there she is that's in place all good huh so there we are that's all our parts all we've got to do now is fit the machine gun but i'm going to do that after i've done some weathering so there we are oh the gun as well i've got the gun barrel built up but not um but not painted obviously so we've got to get that done as well 
So I'll get that primed and painted before the next part, and I think the next part will be weathering, that'll be it. Um, what I am going to do is I want the decals to go on as well. Here are some decals here which need to be fitted. So we're going to get those on, and what I'll do is I will only gloss coat where they're going to go because my experience with doing those little fire extinguishers, like you can see here, they, was, they just did not want to go down. So I'm going to have a real struggle, I think, to get them to go down over this lovely cast texture. But um, on the whole, very, very impressive. So we'll call that a day for this part. We'll, sh we'll see if I can get the turret fitted so you can see how it looks. He's just said them done. Easier said than done. There we go. There we go. We can turn the turret around. So now you can see. There she is. Basically. A finished. Basically a finished chieftain. Before weathering. So the gun barrel. Is going to slot into there. That way up. I was just going to push in there like that so you can see how she's going to look. And there she is. Looking all chieftain like. So in the next one, I may even do the weathering off camera. I don't know because I'm no good at it. So we'll see. I will, we'll see. But I'll, I'll see you for the next part. And we have to get this finished. Today is December the 16th. And uh, I'm going to put this out today, I think. So um, I will see you all for the next part and we will get her finished. But uh, it has to be done by December the 30th because of the Black Rifle Model Works uh, group build for the Elizabethan group build. So I will see you all soon for the final part. And um, I think in the meantime I'll get the decals on. You don't need to see me do that. Uh, I'll clear coat the areas, get the decals down. Uh, do these touch up areas. I'm just going to blow a bit of white over there as well I think. And, um, and I'll see you all back for part whatever it is, the next one. <laughs> this one plus one. I can't remember what part number this is. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye for now. Oh, and don't forget, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe. And also, go over to Black Rifle Model Works on YouTube um, and also on Facebook. There's some fantastic, fantastic work on there. Luke is kind of the, the main man behind Black Rifle Model Works. And his building and weathering is just absolutely out of this world. He's just done a T-55 and it is absolutely stunning. And he's getting into aircraft now, which is cool. So I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.